Here's one of the quickest ways to create a slider like this with moving numbers in Figma. Let's take a look at how we can create this prototype in Figma. The first thing we're going to do is actually press F to use the frame tool and then under phone we're going to go for iPhone 11 Pro slash X. We're going to click that which will create our test frame. The next thing we're going to do is again use a frame tool to create a frame that is approximately 260 pixels wide. So um, keep in mind this should this should fit within this frame. So let's go for 260 by 16. And this frame is going to be called slider bar mask. And then I'm going to use the rectangle tool by pressing R and create a rectangle that has precisely the same dimensions as this frame, which is 260 by 16. I'm going to round these corners completely and here as well. I'm going to make sure this says clip content and then I'm going to press command X and command V right here. I'm going to center this against the parent frame. I'm going to name this rectangle uh, slider bar, slider bar, right? And I'm going to make it green like this. Next thing we're going to do is use the ellipse tool to create an ellipse that is the same color, but it's going to be slightly lighter like this. Let's compare. Yeah, that's about right. We're going to make it approximately 30 or 40 pixels, yeah, something like that, 38 maybe. And we're going to press Command R to rename this to slider control. Next, we're going to turn this into a component and we're going to create a variant. This variant is going to be called press. This one's going to be called default, right? So we have two variants, default and press. And then we're going to create in this, within this variant, we have the slider control ellipse. We're going to duplicate that. We're going to make it larger like this. We're going to move that beneath the first layer. And then we're going to reduce the opacity to 26, right? Then we're going to select the very first variant, go to prototype and connect that to the second one, to the second variant. And we're going to say while pressing. Change to property one pressed and it's going to be, it's going to be instant for now. Perfect. The next thing we're going to do is select the text tool and we're going to type in 0, 100, 200 and all the way like this to 1000. We're going to center this text like this and we're going to change the font to Avenir Next bold and we're going to make it approximately 40 pixels, right? And also we're going to pick the color from this bar, maybe make it a bit darker like this. Then I'm going to press with this text selected, I'm going to press Command Option G to wrap this inside a frame. I'm going to press enter and make sure this says center and top. And then I'm going to decrease the height of the frame number one to about this tall. What I'm doing here is basically selecting which part of the numbers are going to be visible. In this case, just going to be one row and it's the zero one. And then I'm going to rename this to numbers and I'm going to go over here to check clip content, right? So what we've done here is we've created a frame that contains all the numbers, but only one at a time is going to be visible. Perfect. So we have the slider bar mask. We have the slider control. The next thing we're going to do is go over to assets and search for slider control. And we're going to click and drag that over here like this. Then we're going to take this slider control component and we're going to place that on top of the slider bar mask like this, maybe position it right around here, right? So that it looks as a slider like this. And we're going to also select the slider bar within the slider bar mask frame and move it all the way over here so that it's hidden right behind the circle and also almost outside of the frame that's called slider bar mask. At the same time, you need to make sure that this slider bar mask has clip content selected. Otherwise, otherwise this happens, right? So you don't want that. You want to make sure this is checked right here. I'm going to also select the text tool and type in just slide to adjust to show some kind of instructions. We're going to make this Avenir Next heavy with some letter spacing and we're going to select a color from here. I'm going to now select these two 
press Command G to group them. And then I'm gonna select all these three elements and press Shift A to create an auto layout. The spacing will be probably around 20, right? We're gonna name this auto layout slider. I'm gonna maybe make this a little bit larger so that it's easier to read. Now that we have this slider auto layout, we're gonna go over to the stop bar with this selected and create a component from this. Then we're gonna create a variant, another variant that's gonna be called 1000. The first one is gonna be called zero. And with this variant, I'm gonna select the slider control. I'm gonna use arrows, shift and arrow, to position that right here and then I'm gonna add 12 more pixels so shift right arrow and then one two so that's 12. We want to make sure that this distance from the between the right edge of the slider bar mask and the right edge of the slider control is the same as here right so that's 12 on the left side 12 here as well right also i'm gonna select the slider bar and we're gonna press this icon to move it all the way over here we have two states the only thing that's missing is selecting the text component and aligning that to the bottom or you can press option s so that the number 1000 is now visible so now we have two final states of this slider i'm gonna go over to prototype with this initial state selected and I'm gonna connect that to the second state. And right now, this is very important, we're gonna select on drag, change to property 1000 and this is gonna be smart animate and we're gonna go for 140 milliseconds, for example. And finally, I'm gonna go for two assets, search for slider component and I'm gonna click and drag that over to this canvas, to this frame. I'm gonna position it approximately here and also just very quickly, I'm gonna change the color of this slider bar mask in both of these variants to black but with transparency of around 10. And finally I'm gonna launch the prototype. So the slider looks good, it doesn't work properly though so we have to do a few adjustments to make this work. So first of all I'm gonna select the first variant and remove the auto layout and do the same here. Then I'm gonna select the slider bar mask and center that. Right, so press this icon and same here. That's the first adjustment. The second adjustment is that we actually want to remove this interaction and instead of selecting the whole variant we're going to select just the circle. So again on drag change to property 1000 smart animate 140 milliseconds and we're going to do the same with this second one back to the first one. So on drag change to property 0 smart animate is out 140. Let's go over here press R to reset our prototype and let's test this out. And this is what we get now. If we click this slider control where first of all it's being highlighted like this and I don't know if it's visible but let's zoom in a little. I click and hold down my mouse and you can see that it's being highlighted. Now I can click and drag like this to adjust the value, adjust the position of the slider and also the number that is appearing on the screen. Then when I release it's gonna go over to 1000 and we can go back as well, back to zero, you can slide like this and this component is now finished. You might be asking why I chose the approach with the components like this and the reason is very simple you can now reuse this component on your layout multiple times so we can have like three different sliders that are working independently that you can all of these can be set up to a different you know value uh, of course we would have to define if we for example wanted uh, this we wanted to be able to set these values to let's say 500 we would have to create a state for that right now you can only go either 0 or 1000 but um, this is the reason why you want to use components as much as possible because it makes them really easy to reuse so you can use this across different pages in your prototype and let's say you'd want to change the you know the color of the of the text for example right so you can just go over here and then turn this from um, I don't know green to dark blue like this 
and it's gonna automatically update across all of these instances. So that's an advantage of using a component-based approach. This is how you create a slider components in Figma. Uh, if you learned something new, leave a like, and if you'd like to see more similar tutorials, well, first of all, go and check out my channel where I do plenty of tutorials on Figma and UX and UI design, and then also leave a like so that I know that you would like to see more of these in the future. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you in the next one.